in our second week at the Spiro station, we're going to handle Spiro's collision event. So Spiro is smart enough to know if he has collided with a hard surface, and you're going to write code to tell him to turn to the right to see if he can get around the obstacle. So I have some code written here. I'm going to run it, and here is my Spiro on the right. So I'm going to set him running forward. He senses he's collided, turns red, and then goes around the obstacle. I also added some code to make him come back to me because I didn't want to have to keep getting up to um, get it. So I'll go ahead and stop that code. And then you and I are going to write it together. So um, I'm going to go back here and start a new project by hitting the plus sign. You can call it collide or crash or whatever you like. Um, the first thing I'm going to add is my other event because I have the program start event, but now we're going to have another event, the on collision event. So the way it works is Spiro is going to execute the code under the program start until he senses a collision. Then he's going to stop this code and scoot right down here execute this code, and then go right back up here where he left off. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a variable that says, when I start the program, my crash variable is zero. Once I've collided, I'm going to set that crash variable to one and then continue my code. And the code is going to do something different if I've crashed than if I have not crashed. It's going to turn right if I've crashed. So we're going to make him essentially drive and check if I've crashed, drive, check if I've crashed, drive, check if I've crashed. So whenever you do something repeatedly, it's going to be a loop. So let's start with the loop. I'm going to put that under the on start program. Inside the loop, let's loop four times. And then we're going to say, if I've crashed, go right, and if not, go straight. So let's go ahead and put the if then else in there. And then I'm going to need a variable, my crashed variable. So let's go to variables and create that. I'm going to call it crashed. And I'm going to set its initial value to zero. I also think it's worthwhile under operators to set the variable to zero when the program starts. It makes your code easier to read and remember what you set that value to. And when you program something in real world programming, you always have to declare your variables and set them at the start. So it's a good practice. So now I'm going to set it to zero when I start the program. But if I've collided, I'm going to set it under operators. Let's change it to crashed and not heading. I'm going to set it to one. One meaning I have crashed. So um, as I loop, we're going to check if, let's add our crashed variable to our if. If crashed equals zero, I'm going to roll straight ahead under roll. And my direction by default is straight ahead or zero degrees. But if I have crashed, which what happens in the else, if this happens to this, else or otherwise, turn to the right and make him roll and change his direction to 90 degrees or a right turn. So I forgot to set these other two variables. I'm going to make him roll for two seconds at a speed of 50, about. Then when he crashes, We'll just make him go a little ways. I know how big my stack of books is. It's small. Um, same speed, right around 50. And he's going to turn right. One more thing I want to add in here before we continue is notice we set crash to zero at the start of the program. We set it to one when we've crashed. We never set it back to zero. Because theoretically, we've handled the crash event right here. We've said turn to the right and, and move a little bit out of the way. So let's go ahead and under operators, set that back. Oops, it's got to be right in the else. And then go to variables. Then we're going to set crash back to zero because I've handled my collision by turning right and moving a little bit out of the way. 
set it back to zero and then continue looping. Then it's gonna be zero again, it's gonna move forward. One final thing that I did in uh, my sample program was I set the color. It makes it a little easier to see what's going on. If I set the color to green, when I am going straight, and it's gonna set it to red when I've crashed. It's just a little visual indicator that your code is working properly. So um, go ahead and write that code. I'm gonna ask you to pause the video right now and go ahead and write that code. When that code is working and you're satisfied with it, come back here and we're gonna write a little bit of more code um, to prepare for next week. So hit pause and write this code.